So I'm honored to welcome you all here tonight to not only celebrate the mission of this amazing organization, but also the remarkable contributions of everyone in this room, and most notably tonight's honoree, David Becknell. So this is always one of my favorite Tourette Association events of the year. We have some others, and you can learn about them by visiting Tourette.org if you want. This is always my favorite one, because it brings together so many of our loyal supporters, our youth ambassadors and our families, and it brings us together in one room, which really reminds us that we're not alone. And that's really what the Tourette Association is all about. It reminds people that they're not alone in their journey toward a diagnosis of Tourette syndrome or an effective treatment. Not alone in their effort to explain to their teacher why they just can't stop doing that. Not alone in thinking that yet another trip to the allergist or the ENT is gonna stop those sniffles or those throat clears. How many people in the room understand what I'm talking about? Show of hands. Thank you. So, and the other thing that we really do is we show that people are not alone and at times feeling completely Now, I said this was a celebration, and of course I mean what I say and I say what I mean, and my staff knows that all too well. <laughs> so let me give you some things to cheer about. So over one million people are affected by Tourette's syndrome and tic disorder, and over half of them are going undiagnosed. And while that number is staggering, our collective awareness efforts have increased understanding of this, the disorder, resulting in improved time to diagnosis. In a recent impact study led by the TAA, 71% of caregivers of children with TS reported receiving a diagnosis in less than two years. We are most adults of the community. It took them on average 10 or more. So that's a huge, I mean that's like an 80% increase if we're highballing it. And for any of the statisticians in the room, please don't judge me. I'm just throwing that number out there, right? That's a big difference, right? 10 years to two. So while there's a lot more work that we have to do, um, you know, we've done a tremendous amount to continue those education awareness efforts. So in 2019, 479 people received an introduction to CVIT training. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with that, it's Comprehensive Behavioral Intervention for Ticks, a first-line therapy uh, recommended by the American Academy of Neurology for the treatment of Tourette's syndrome. So we introduced 479 new people to that. In, and we also did, uh, well, so 6,010 people took advantage of family and community-based education programming, and 1,700 education professionals attended our education presentations. 116 youth ambassadors, and I know we have a few in the room, so raise your hand if you're a youth ambassador and you're here tonight. along with their adult team member, were trained to educate their communities and tell their truth about their experience living with the condition. 24 young adults, and I'm particularly happy about this statistic, 24 young adults were trained for the first time ever for our Rising Leaders program. So this is a program that takes young adults and it aims to develop the skill and the will of this community to be Tourette Syndrome advocates. And many of these young adults had met the first person ever in their life with Tourette syndrome at that training. So that's a pretty big deal. And we've also added 13 new support groups across the country, which brings us to over 100 support groups and chapters throughout the nation. And finally, since 2001, we've awarded over $21 million in research support to facilitate new and cutting-edge projects exploring the causes and treatments for Tourette's syndrome. So I know I just threw a lot of numbers at you, right? <laughs> threw a ton of numbers at you. So all you really need to know from all of that is that we are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing a fantastic job with your dollars. We are making the 
of dollars work for families and individuals who need the support, people who are not getting the support from any other organization in the entire country. We're it, my friends, and we are killing it. But we can only do it with your support. None of this would be possible without the most important people in this room, that's you. So let's celebrate you tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here. Now, I'd really like to introduce somebody who has made innumerable contributions to the Tourette Association of America. Someone who dedicates countless hours to our important cause. Someone who has been an integral part of this organization for many, many years. It's my esteemed pleasure to introduce Tourette Association of America Board Chair, Randy Zemsky. Thank you, Amanda, you rock. Welcome to the 2019 Tourette Association of America Gala. I'm thrilled to be here tonight as we honor David Begg now and celebrate all of you for your outstanding contributions to the Tourette community, community. Your ongoing dedication to this community is invaluable. It's that commitment that has made the past 47 years possible and that ensures our future. The Tourette Association really does improve the lives of people and families with um, Tourette Syndrome or other tic disorders. When my son was diagnosed with Tourette Syndrome 22 years ago, our lives were changed forever. I'd heard of Tourette Syndrome, but I didn't really know what it was, and I certainly didn't know that it was such a poorly understood neurological condition. I didn't know that teachers and academic administrators would be so resistant to accommodate children with Tourette syndrome. And I didn't know, but quickly came to understand how brutal and how stigmatizing this diagnosis could be. In a time of great need, I turned to the Tourette Association of America. At that time, it was called the Tourette Syndrome Association. They provided me with the information and the support that helped me to be, I think, a pretty strong advocate for my son. I'm not sure what, I've done, what I would have done without their uh, information, guidance, and support but I do know that I've been giving back ever since because I am eternally grateful to this organization. Each year, tens of thousands of families contact the TAA for the same kindness and guidance and support that we received more than two decades ago. The TAA is a symbol of hope to all of us, but we cannot do it alone. It is only with your help that we continue, that we can continue to help people going forward. So now is the time that I would normally introduce a highly polished Tourette Association produced video, but we're going to do something different. Tonight we have two very special guests, Youth Ambassadors Jordan Falkenstern and Mia Manti will share their personal stories with you later in the evening. But right now, we'd like to showcase a video that they created at the last Youth Ambassador training in Washington, D.C. And subsequent to that training, they created other videos. And in the process of doing so, they have reached millions of teens nationwide. My name is Brandon Hi, I'm Becca. My name is Jordan. My name is Stephen Andrews. Hi, I'm Cornice. My name is Victoria. Uh, I was diagnosed officially in third grade. I was diagnosed when I was five. Uh, I was uh, diagnosed with term when I was uh, like seven years old. I was diagnosed at uh, 16. So I was diagnosed officially in third grade. 
However, I started displaying symptoms as early as preschool. I think the biggest struggle for me with being diagnosed with Tourette syndrome was not really knowing what it is right before I went into high school. Bullying is really bad. Well, it was really bad in middle school. You have to have a learning disability. It's really hard. It can be embarrassing at times to be taken out of your classroom and having to be put in a separate area and you kind of pointed out that there is something different about you, which is hard to deal with. It's been pretty rough. My tics have always kind of been bad. Um, they've always been noticeable. It kind of been hard, especially in high school, to actually even attend class just because of how constant they were, how hard they were physically. It be hard. People stare. They can make fun of you. I would get a fire siren or an album. So I was sitting in class and you'd hear, ooh, that was good. I'm on like sleep medication, internet medication, AHP medication. I do see the therapy, so it's cognitive behavioral therapy. And they, in that therapy, we work on replacing my tics with something that would be less harmful or noticeable, and it's so far it's really helpful. Eventually, I learned different ways to kind of help manage them through like CBIT and other, um, other different forms of therapy. So I definitely think that's a great help for me. Me and Jordan, you are why we do what we do. That was fabulous. some other thank yous to extend for this evening. Uh, first, our event committee who worked so hard to make tonight's event come alive. Will members of the event committee please stand? Irene Corey, Jean Ganusi, Diane and Nala, Christine Mazzarisi, Kyle O'Keefe, and Kristen Schoenhauer. acknowledge our amazing chapter leaders and volunteers as well, because without you, much of our work would not be possible. So let's give TAA volunteers a huge round of applause. <laughs> Finally, I want to give a thank you to my fellow board members who worked so hard throughout the year to help the Tourette Association achieve its mission. As I call your name, please stand. Azad Anand. Steve Barrett. Sue Corey. Alice Kane. Cindy Kurtz. Monty Redman. Rovina Schroeder. David Schroeder. Jasmine Tarkov and John Walker. And last, but certainly not least, it's my honor to welcome to the stage my friend and former TAA board chair, Michael Wolf. Michael and his wife, Polly Draper, have been involved with Red Association for many years and have tremendous have been tremendous supporters of our work. But tonight you are all in for a huge treat because as you are about to hear, Michael is an amazing jazz pianist. So without further ado, the Michael Wolf Trio. <laughs> 